So, welcome to Bash Scripting. We're going to be talking about various, well, we'll start out just doing some stuff in the terminal and doing some more advanced stuff than we did before, and then we're going to get into actual scripting. Um, for the record, the rest of the lectures are in this room through the end of the month. I don't know about next month yet, but there's at least two more that are in this room, not the room across the way. It's hard because it's 105 and 150, so you don't know if I made a mistake taking the email or if we actually changed rooms. But we did actually change rooms. We're in here for the rest of the time. So with that, I will get started. OK, so in our first lecture, we looked a little bit at the command line and what it can do. When we say the command line, that's kind of ambiguous. It doesn't really mean anything. You can have a command line interface for a wide variety of programs. Often when we say the command line, we're referring to your shell, uh, in which case you're looking at a shell here. The shell is basically a command interpreter. Its job is to allow you to write commands, and it interprets them for you. One such shell is called bash. That happens to be the shell that I'm using here, and it's the shell that's installed by default on your computers. It's also a fairly common shell uh, across the board. So what we're going to go over tonight, will some of it's going to be bash specific. Some of it will actually cover it. It expands to other shells, because bash comes and relates to some other shells. So some of this stuff is general, and you can use it in any shell. When you get advanced enough, you will get to the point where essentially you're going to pick a shell you like, just like you pick an editor you like. So if you like Emacs, maybe you like Bash. Most people like Bash, but there's this thing called the C shell, uh, C S H. There's something called the Z shell. There's Bash. There's more shells that I don't even know about. So what you actually do when you open up this terminal, it actually launches this program called Bash, and that's what's interpreting our commands. You can change what program it launches by default. It's pretty easy to do. Often when you get accounts on a server, like one of the options will ask you what you want your default shell to be, because that's what gets started when you log into the server. Um, Bash is pretty common. Most of what we're going to do tonight is fairly generalized. Some of it's Bash specific. I'll try to point out when it is versus isn't. You can always go into other shells just by running them. So to run the Python, to run the C shell, and it's not installed. Well done. But if the C shell were installed on my machine, uh, that would have opened it. I probably this I just set up this machine that probably doesn't actually have any of these other shells on it. Yeah, it doesn't have that either. So I guess we're working with Bash tonight. Um, there is a very basic shell that's just sh. This is actually we help inside there. Yeah, it's so basic it doesn't. <laughs> um, if we do man sh, so the sh command in this case happens to be sending a map through and things. It's a shell called dash. It's just kind of a very, very basic, uh, a very basic shell. But bash is a pretty full featured shell. It's more advanced. It's common today. You can do a lot of things in bash you can't do in these other shells. It's a good shell. People tend to use it unless they want to use some more esoteric, even more advanced shell like the shell. So. Without further ado, normally you start bash just by opening the terminal. If for some reason you're in another shell and you want to start bash, you can start bash by running bash. So now I'm actually in a bash session inside my bash session. And I can exit out one, it'll bounce back into the previous one. But bash, like everything else on Linux, is just a program. It happens to be a program that kind of exists to make us easier for us to run other programs. But at the end of the day, it's a program. When you run something in bash, it spawns off other programs. So is that what happens when you log into root? It will actually spawn another bash with you as root? Yeah, so kind of. Okay. It's a little bit complicated. I'm not, I mean, I could try to go into it, and I'm going to really screw it up. Uh, but the basic gist is, I mean, things are a little bit less clear today because you got these GUIs and you have to click on a shell. But back in the day, when there was no GUI, turn on your computer. The first thing you'd see is just a flashing login prompt. And that's a program called login. It runs that as soon as the computer boots. That's when the first program runs. Once you do login, it authenticates you, so it checks your password. And then the first thing login does after it confirms your password is it goes and runs whatever your default shell is. So yeah, when you log in, and when you like, when you do uh, su root or something, so you log in as root, or if you were to switch into a root context here, it's going to go through the login program, authenticate you, and then login is going to call whatever the default shell is. Um, this is a little bit not, I mean, this is getting into the Linux esoteria and not so much we're covering tonight, but there's a program called, or not a program, there's a file always on Linux um, called, etc. 
P-A-S-S-W-D. Traditionally, this is the file that stores all of your usernames, all your passwords, and the name of everyone's default shell. It doesn't actually store your passwords anymore because we've gotten a little more advanced than that, but if you cat this program, you'll see all the users for the computer. Uh, most of these are system users, so this stuff's gonna be a little more complicated, but down at the bottom, you'll see my user. It has my username, it has some info about my user ID and group, it has my actual name, and then this last thing here is my default shell. So slash bin slash dash is my default shell. I could change this to anything else and I would effectively change what shell I got by default when I logged into the machine. Um, for root, it's probably the same. We find root somewhere on this list. So the default shell for root is also bin bash. Um, for some of these system accounts, sometimes you'll see yeah, something like this. So if it's a system account you would never actually log into, often it'll have something like this, and that's partially a security measure. So in case someone finds a way to get into this account, it's going to not actually want to reprogram you even since you log in or you know, anything. Um, so you can file that away as extra knowledge. But yes, the gist is when you log in, it runs your shell. Um, OK. So moving along, we're in Bash. We're going to look at a handful of things. I should plug in. So I'll get it up. 